All right, let's talk about the Tigers, shall we? Oh, they were Let's magnificent, Kane, weren't they? Where did they win that game of footy in your eyes, Kane? Well, it was in the midfield, Lord Owen. Yeah. I think that's what will give Ken Hinckley and Travis Boak and Tom Rockliffe and those in the middle sleepless nights. This is a big moment in the last quarter where Charlie Dixon, it was probably his only moment in the game. Noah Bolter did a great job on him, but that put them in front. But mm. Richmond just so organised. I can't stomach that that's a deliberate out-of-bounds free kick, and it, I, I just can't. The Tom Rockliffe is half a metre away from that ball. Jeez, you onto it, in, though, weren't you they? play that in real time and not in slow motion. That is never a free kick, and it never should have been, and it's disappointing that that was the goal that probably won it for Richmond. But they were just too good, too tough. 16 to 4 clearances in the last quarter, and so well organised behind the ball. They're a champion team, and they're going to be really, really tough to beat next week. Yeah, the celebrations, yeah, it's just unbelievable for them. They've been at the top for so long. But, uh, you know, look at them. It does, they're still so hungry. Were, and that was what I questioned probably 10, 12 weeks ago. Have they still got the hunger? If you look at Dusty Martin, he's ecstatic. Uh, and it was good for all their, I think, their emergencies. You can see how connected they yeah, are as a football club. On. The excitement of Chol and Caddy and Oleg Markov Brownie, they were pumped. And Damien Hardwick. Ooh, uh, look at him. Oh, what a story he's been uh, when he was under the pump for. Oh, it's almost yeah. backs against the wall, wasn't it, for yeah. them? Because they've been so good and they lost that first final. But what have they changed, Richmond? And they've been a great side all year. But they haven't always been a good clearance side. They're ranked 16th for clearances against their direct opponents. And last time they played Port Adelaide round 11, they got smashed. 18 in the clearances they lost by. The other night... They won by 12. That's a 30 difference the last time they played them. And I think it was because they got on the move. I, I, I've never seen them on the move as much as they were in the centre bounces. Let's have a look at some of them and how clean they were in the wet. Now, Trent Cochin is a great player, but gets on the move all the time at the stoppages. Powell Pepper stands still. Cochin gets on the move the first one. Doesn't happen much. This second one, they get on the move again. Have a look at Jack Graham. Comes around. He's the one on the move this time, but creates a path for Trent Cochin. Clean, gets the footy. Another stoppage. Who's going to be the mover here? Prestia. He's the one on the move. Who gets it? Prestia is the only one out of the three Richmond players that move. He gets the football. This one, Dustin Martin, the only player on the stoppage at the move, and he gets the ball out of the middle. And the final one, it was just a... It was like it was on repeat all night, but Prestia again comes around here. It was just a nice one. Goes around. He's the man on the move. Who gets it again? The bloke on the move. Prestia comes around. He's got the momentum. And I thought it was a massive win for Richmond, the clearances. Nathan Brown looking very dashing, as yeah, all the boys are. Good, with the, uh, we're uh, just sort of, uh, sort of like embracing the whole Brownlow spirit today because it is the oh, virtual Brownlow is? night. Sorry? Is that what it is? <laughs> the Brownlow. That was the joke off the top yeah, two. Well, the I, I'm just, I'm just a little bit worried about all these suits getting ash on them because, Kane, <laughs> oh, surely no. not, surely not on today of all days. You're not going to volcano us, are you? I am. Uh, I'm oh, going to go is, straight to someone who I love, but I got a volcano, volcano Kenny Hinckley oh, today. Oh, I have come to, on. I have to, Ken. No, I don't want to rub salt into the wound, but I have to. And I was nervous <laughs> that this was Ooh. going to happen. Oh. But I want to take you back to during the week when he was asked about what they were going to do with Dustin Martin. Oh, no, collectively, the, the job on any of their players will be done by the team, and that's what will happen. And, you know, Dusty's a great player. It's, great, it's a prelim final. There's great players out there everywhere, and that's, that's why it's exciting. It's, you know, Richmond's great players and the Port Adelaide great players. There's some, there's some concern for both teams. That's why we go into a prelim final, you're on edge. We'll back our own systems in. If I hear that one more time against Dustin Martin, I'm actually going to explode, TJ. You've got two weeks to come up with a matchup for Dustin Martin, and the best you could give me is Darcy Byrne Jones. He weighs 77 kilos, TJ, and he's on Dustin Martin. What is going on? Have a look at this running to the front. No one on him. Trent McKenzie, that's Dustin Martin. That's the greatest in finals Australia, player we've okay. ever seen. That is the greatest finals player we have ever seen, and you are letting him run around and do what ever he wants in a prelim final. In a game that he's won by six goals, oh, that. you get that. Mm. That's a rag doll. That's 77 kilograms. That's the best matchup you'd come up with in two weeks. And unfortunately for Ken, it's probably maybe cost him a premiership. Ooh. I reckon you had us eight goals down at quarter time. Kane's just uh, got us three back, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, that was is, brilliant. Is it just something on Kane said, and I heard it in the commentary last night as well, is Dusty the best finals player that we've ever seen? It's a big call. Big call. Um, I mean, if you go back to Wayne someone Kerry was like, pretty good, TJ. Yeah, he was. Well, so was Ron Barassi, if you can go back even further. So oh, Norm yeah, Smith, I mean, so Damo. Wayne Kerry dominated Nor the uh, the '94 <laughs> series and also put together the, one of the great games in '97 as well. So I think I think his record stacks up. Well, no, it's certainly no, Norm worth Smith, the though. It's worth the. Okay, a good. Andrew McLeod. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, it's, we can spend a whole two hours actually well, discussing who. Yeah, I know, and it's a great, well, it's a great debate. We to want have, to we'll mention uh, Brad, Brad Ebert here. We want to mention, uh, of course, such a huge name over at Port Adelaide. But what about? We'll all remember his last contest on the ground when he did. He got knocked out. But uh, there it is. There. We'll all remember that. But what a man, Brad, Brad Ebert came. I just want to say something serious for a moment. In 2012, we lost a teammate and John McCarthy um, passed away, as we know, on the footy trip. They're best mates with Brad Ebert. The footy club was on its absolute knees, financially, performance-wise. New coach came in. Brad Ebert changed helped change the culture of a broken footy club, dealing with the tragedy of that, yeah. the way that he trained, the standards that he set and the person that he is, for him to go out like that as his final act is an amazing full stop and what has been a significant career on, but most importantly off the field.